So this is a video about how to graph several different sets of data on the same graph using the uh, Google Sheets spreadsheet. So uh, once we've done a lab, we've got data collected, and we are going to organize that data on a Google Sheets spreadsheet. So I've opened up a spreadsheet, and a spreadsheet is basically like a big sheet of paper with different boxes, and we can type numbers and uh, words into those boxes. And then once we get the information in the boxes, we can manipulate it in certain ways. So uh, we're going to put the data from a, an imaginary experiment on this spreadsheet. But before we do that, we have to think a little bit about what we want our graph to look like. So we're going to make a scatter graph, and we want a certain value to end up on the x or horizontal axis. And so we want to get that those values in column A of the spreadsheet. So in the graph I'm about to make, I want the x or horizontal axis to be volume in milliliters. So I very carefully type that at the top, volume and the unit of measure. I've got three sets of data. I've made measurements on paper, measure of mass and volume for paper, mass and volume for plastic, mass and volume for glass, and I have carefully typed those values up here. Uh, those labels uh, are going to appear on the graph. So I want them to be typed in the way that I want the graph. All right. So I've already got to start on entering some of my data. I'm going to finish that up right now. Now, I've got my uh, mass and volume for paper, and I put the mass of the paper in one column, in column B here, next to what I want on the x-axis. So this paper, uh, this, these values for paper are going to be the y values or y coordinates for um, some of these points. Now I want the graph to graph the data for paper, plastic, and glass separately. So in order to get it to do that, I need to put the uh, y values or, or the uh, y coordinates uh, the mass values in a separate column for the plastic. So I'm going to put that data in a separate column, and that way I can get this uh, program to think that I, or to understand that I have three separate sets of data. So paper in one column, plastic in another column, and I'm going to put glass in the third column. Notice that I did not have to enter this data in any kind of an order. These are in order from smallest to largest. These are not. These volumes for the paper are not in order from smallest to largest. I just have to make sure that whatever volume matches up with the correct mass. Okay, here's my data. I want to graph all of this data. So I'm going to highlight all of it and then go up here to where it says insert. And what I'm calling a graph, Google Spreadsheets calls a chart. So when I click on the word chart, it makes a chart. Now, it makes a chart that it thinks is swell, but this is not the kind of chart that I want. It has graphed red, blue, yellow, and green four sets of data separately. I only have three sets of data. I want a different kind of chart. So I go over here to the chart area. Setup is highlighted. And for this case, I want to choose scatter chart. That's often what we'll choose for um, chemistry class. And when I do that, you can see that it has decided to put volume on the x-axis or horizontal axis and it now has three sets of data a separate one for paper plastic and glass and it has a key that tells us which one is which so the blue data are the paper data the red data points go along with the plastic the yellow ones for the glass all right now there are some things that I want to do to make this chart look better. 
So I'm going to go over here to the chart editor and choose customize and there's going to be lots of things that we can do. We could change the font and the border color if we want. I won't be doing that. We do want titles and labels for the axes. So we want a chart title. So under chart and axis titles, I want to select chart title and type in the chart title. So what I have done is measured the mass and the volume of three materials. Okay, so I'm telling people exactly what's on the graph, mass and volume of what? Of three different materials. I'm also going to want a horizontal or x-axis label. Axes always need to be labeled and they need to have the uh, unit of measure. So I did one for the horizontal axis, that's volume in milliliters. The vertical axis, the vertical axis, I'm going to choose that and I'm going to put in mass and grams. As soon as I type it in, it appears on my chart. So now I've got axes labeled and a title for the whole graph. Okay, I could change the fonts and things like that. I'm not going to. Next, I want to deal with each of the series of data. And I want to be sure that they are doing what I'm going to do, or what I want them to do. So right now, the color on this graph tells me the difference between my data points. And, um, uh, and that's great, looks great. But what if later on I decide to print this out using a black and white printer? That would be a problem. So I'm going to change the data points. I'm not going to change the color that is in there right now, but I am going to change the shape of the data points. So I'm going to select paper. They're now blue, and I'm going to change the paper to triangles as a shape. So you can see the blue color doesn't disappear, but what used to be dots are now triangles. And I can make them a little bigger also. Makes it easier to see. All right, now I've accidentally clicked off the editing. I can go back to editing. I was customizing. I'm working on the series. All right, now. I'm also going to change the shape of the points around glass. I'm going to make those squares so that they're different from the other two kinds of points. And I'm going to make those squares a little bigger. So now I have color and shape. All right, what else do I want to do? I want to see if the data points for each one of these sets of data follow some kind of a trend. So I'm going to have the graphing program or the chart program put in a trend line. I'm going to do that for glass. I forgot to do that for plastic. I want to do it for plastic. And I forgot to do it for paper. I want to do it for paper. And as I click trend line, you can see that uh, it draws a line that fits the data point. In this case, our lines go right through every data point. These are straight lines. It looks like they fit the data pretty well. We're going to leave them like that. There are some other things we can do, but we don't need to do those right at the moment. All right. Now, let's go back up here. We have got uh, the legend to deal with. So the legend is this stuff, this information about what the blue triangles and the red dots and the yellow squares mean. I don't happen to like it being under the title. I want to move it onto the right of this graph. So I'm going to put it over there. All right, now I have uh, a couple more things to do. On the x-axis, I want to make, I see that my data is very close to the right side of the table, and I also want to see what happens to the line when it gets to zero. So I want to change, I'm on horizontal axis now, I want to change the minimum value to zero, and the maximum value, I'm going to make it a little bit higher than it is now. I think it's at seven now, I'm going to put an eight in there, and when I do that, the 8 appears here. And we can see that that moves this red dot uh, to the 
more to the middle of the graph where it's easier to see. I'm going to do the same kind of thing here for the vertical or y axis. I want to see what happens. I want to make sure that the minimum value stays zero. I don't like this yellow square being right at the top of the graph, so I'm going to make the maximum value a little bit bigger so it moves that yellow dot into the middle of the graph. Now I can see all of my data points. I can see a trend line for each set of data. I can see labels for the x and y axes, a, a title for the chart as a whole. I can see my legend or key over here that tells me what the colors and shapes mean. This is a good graph. I've got the whole graph highlighted. I'm going to make a copy of it and I can take that copy and I can insert it into a Google Doc. And if I insert it into the Google Doc, I can um, I want to link it to the spreadsheet so that uh, if I change it later on, it will change automatically. So there you are. That is a um, that is a good graph. I have um, gotten all my data into my spreadsheet, and I've done it in such a way that if I change the data later on, the uh, my Google Doc will automatically change. That's it. Over and out.